I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good morning, good morning, Jonathan Strickland. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful morning? Excellent. It is nice and autumnal here in Atlanta, Georgia. It was actually chilly enough this morning where I had to wear a jacket. Wow. And uh, that's that's rare for October in Atlanta. And here I am uh, in my warmth with the rain um, saying it's cool. And there you are with your jacket. Oh, my. Well, we can definitely exchange emails, right? You send some of the chill. I'll send some of the sunshine. I, hey, I'm, I'm all for weather exchange. <laughs> hey, Jonathan, please do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us meeting. Well, I'm a podcaster with yeah. How Stuff Works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell us about the podcast for those who don't know what that is. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a big lover of it, big fan. The initial podcast that I started listening to, hey, it was you. Oh, that's that's so flattering. Yeah, the podcast we launched it in 2008. The show I do is called Tech Stuff, and as the name suggests, we look into all things technological, whether it's a, uh, a particular gadget or maybe it's a company that's been really important in tech, something like uh, I'm doing a, a show about Xerox right now, which is actually really, really important in technology. A lot of people just think of the copiers, but it's way more than that. Oh, really? Or sometimes sometimes I focus on specific people like uh, Nikola Tesla or Ada Lovelace or Steve Jobs. And, uh, and I look for the stories behind the technology because i think that that's the way we really come to a deep understanding yeah so the other day i got to speak with um jonathan and um the internet um the tech happened right so we ended up having a bit of a short conversation where i well it wasn't a conversation he was telling me a joke and i needed to share with you amazing audience it's like we'll need to do a 12 minute conversation just sharing that that joke like he, he he needs to have that on something like the podcast hey the, the 12 minute um joke uh i'm getting ideas here while i'm speaking but yeah it was definitely fun hearing that joke my friend uh jonathan who did you learn the skill of storytelling from well my father and my mother are both storytellers but really my father's side of the family that's been a tradition with them forever and my dad is uh, both a teacher and an author and so he has always loved telling stories whether it was reading to me when i was a child making things up uh, on the fly i mean of course he's he's written lots of novels himself and I, I i developed my love of storytelling from my father and a lot of my nuance comes from him but i've also just i've always devoured stories wherever I could, whether it was in the written format, you know, authors like Mark Twain telling amazing stories, whether they were funny or kind of creepy, Edgar Allan Poe, that'd be another one. But then I just listened to just brilliant storytellers like Garrison Keillor, people who can sit down and bring you on a journey. And once you start to identify the little elements that that speak to you, you can start practicing and seeing which ones feel right in your own style. And that's sort of a lot of my storytelling developed organically. But the thing that guided it, the thing that that pushed it was just this passion for storytelling. Yeah, well, you've definitely done the work. Wow, you've definitely done the work. And I think in doing the work, you get the opportunity to fine tune, uh, not just your voice, not just your story, but who you are, right? Oh, absolutely. You learn You learn not just about the subject you're studying. You learn about yourself in the process. I think really learning to me is all about not just growing your own knowledge of the world around you, but a lot of, there's a lot of self-reflection that happens as well. And you start to, to learn more about what it is to be you, you learn more about what it is to be you as part of a greater society. You learn more about how you fit in with everyone else and how uh, ultimately how reaching out 
and communicating with others or, or even better, directly helping others ultimately comes back to you, maybe not in a tangible way, but in a way that, that I think leads to greater satisfaction. And I this I know this is getting like super big philosophical, but I truly believe this. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I live by the principles Zig Ziglar spelled out in his um his quote, um, help enough other people get what they want and you will get what you want. And um I think sometimes we do not know exactly um the full potential of what we want. We have an idea, but when you do mm-hmm. give pass your expectations it's amazing how what you get really is that idea and more well and and one of the things i have learned as a podcaster and i'm sure you have as well is how incredibly selfless and giving other podcasters can be i i have found on multiple Mm -hmm. occasions when i reach out to my fellow podcasters people who have been in the business as long or longer than i have some of whom have even larger followings than I do. If I reach out to them and say, hey, would you be interested in coming on to my show to talk about something? They're always happy to do it because they love also to share what they have learned and then to learn more in return. And it's refreshing to me. I came from an environment where it was very competitive and everyone was trying to land that next big deal. And, and that, that was so not who I am. The, the, idea, the idea that you're trying to make sure other people don't get something so that you can get something. Then to move into this other world where people want to collaborate and make something fantastic through collaboration, it's just so much more personally rewarding to me. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, just before, somewhere before the conversation with you, um, one guy, one one, no, it's, it was Sarah Varney, and she has a podcast, um, uh, Disney World. Oh, let me get the name correct. Uh, let me not kill her the name. Disney Every Week, right, with the passports and moms. And we were talking about, hey, if it's one place we can be selfish is when we're being selfish by serving others, and then that brings joy. Right, so you be selfish for that joy, right? That comes from helping others. It's fascinating, isn't it? It absolutely is. It is, and it's addictive. I mean, if you if you just have that experience, really, any time I go through something where I can see someone else have that true moment of joy, it is. It's like a shot of adrenaline. Uh, in a in a more kind of you know modest way. I can relay a story since you said Disney, it immediately made me think this. So my wife had never been to Disney World until uh, she was in her early 20s. Her first trip was with my family. Now, I grew up in Georgia, which is not far from Florida, and my parents were both teachers, so they would have the summers off. So we would go to Disney once every couple of years, and I became a Disney fanatic. My wife had never been. Now, I had been so many times that while I enjoyed the experience, it wasn't it wasn't new to me. You know, I I thought it was great, but I didn't I I had forgotten what it was like for it to be new. Watching my wife's discovery as we walk through and she looks down and she sees the castle in front of her and just how big her eyes got. And this is a grown woman. Uh, It reminded me of that magic. And I, I and that's one of those things that while that was a very specific case with Disney, that moment stuck with me, that that moment of if you can be partly responsible for someone else experiencing that level of happiness, even if it's just for a few moments, that is really a special thing. I think it's something we should all strive for as, as much as we possibly can, even if it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be this big meaningful gesture, although those are wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it can be little things, and I, I try really hard every day to make sure that I have at least one moment like that where I have I have been partially responsible for bringing a smile to someone's face. And if I can manage that, then I realize that's a good day. 
Amazing. Well, amazing audience, we are live with Jonathan Strickland. He is the podcast host of Tech Stuff, right? And how stuff works, right? You do some That is right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, check that out. It's really fascinating. Well, Jonathan, let's switch gears for a moment now. Sure. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Mm. Jonathan, what is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, golly. My earliest childhood memory, I remember going to a theater in uh, in in uh, an area in Georgia. It's uh, near McConnell, Truett McConnell College, which is up near Cleveland, Georgia, near Babyland General, where the Cabbage Patch Kids were first created. I remember going to a theater and seeing my father act in a production of The Fantastics, which is a musical. Uh, and my dad, he wasn't playing one of the characters who sings. He was actually a, a almost a non-speaking part. It was a physical comedy part. And I remember watching this show and thinking, I didn't know adults could be silly. I didn't know they were allowed to be silly. And this is a very silly show. And I didn't understand most of it. It's uh, It's got themes that are much more advanced than what your typical child's going to re- understand. But there's a lot of silliness that happens on stage. And... And that opened up my eyes to possibilities, the idea that that the things that I like to do and play, those were acceptable in certain situations. And uh, immediately I wanted to – I just wanted to act all the time. I was a terrible, <laughs> terrible ham as a child. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not much better as an adult, but if I were a kid and there was a chance to steal the spotlight, I did it. Hmm. That's, a, that's intriguing. Hmm. Why do you think this memory sticks out so clear? I think it's because seeing seeing my father do something that he loves, because you know my dad's not a, an actor professionally. It's something that he enjoys doing on, on his own uh, outside of that. Seeing him do something that he's not typically doing and having so much fun, seeing other people have fun, watch him do it. Like it was a big group experience too. Theater is one of those special things where you're, you're sharing that experience with other people and everyone is in that same moment. And it's why I still love going to big group events, things where everyone is experiencing something together, because to me, that just increases the effectiveness of whatever it is, whether it's listening to music or watching a film or watching a show or watching dance. Uh, or uh, I remember seeing uh, uh, some acrobats recently and just hearing everyone gasp at the same time is, is so fun as well. It's so thrilling. And uh, I think it's just that that's just a very powerful sensory memory. There were all those little elements that together form this very uh, powerful image. And, and I mean, like the sounds of, of that come back to me and the, the fact that you have a very dark theater and a very bright stage. Everything's just in great contrast. And it, it really does great job things. Also, I remember that I uh, later went home and there was something – on television that evening that had the song, uh, the September song, which is from the Fantastics, and it played, and it and it blew my mind as a kid because mm-hmm. I had just seen the show wow. <laughs> that had the song in it, and then I'm watching this completely unrelated television program, and it has the song in it, wow. and as a kid, I didn't understand coincidence. I just thought this was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Absolutely. It took a while, right? But then you 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 definitely put the cherry on top when you when you went back home. So I love that idea that um you experienced how stuff works Mm. and now you're helping so many other people um with the fine details of how stuff works and that is really fascinating (laughs) i mean it's to me learning has always been something i have loved and curiosity is is one of those human elements i think is uh really powerful this idea that we want to know more about the universe around us. And that that's everything from the big stuff to the tiny stuff. And one of my favorite things to do with kids, I, I know that people go crazy with those two or three year olds who just keep asking why, why, why? Like they, they every thing you give them, they've got another question for what it is. But I love that. Yeah. I love to inspire that because it just shows someone who is just thirsty for knowledge. And while that can get tiring, <laughs> it's something that I hope we never lose. I hope that we're always throughout our lives asking ourselves 
and other people questions in an effort to learn because as you learn you just continue to grow yeah i think it's intriguing as well when you listen to what you've done via your podcast it's as though you are always answering the why like the next why you know so it's it's really fascinating fascinating being my keyword how you've done that right by by just continuously it's like quick snippets of what's going to be the next why someone would ask and then you answer that so i do love that jonathan if we fast forward to when you were 12 what was your favorite song oh golly when i was 12 let's see so that have been uh in the late eight is probably I mean, you know what i'm gonna have to go with um so i was a huge fan of the new wave movement right when when that happened you know i was a kid like punk had just died out glam glam was gone uh, I I was listening to a lot of the music that my parents listened to, so that included stuff like the Beatles and uh, uh, the Rolling Stones. But I would say that by that time, by the time I was twelve, the song that was just constantly I, I wore the cassette out was uh, was Whip It by Devo, because it had that crazy synthesizer sound. That you know, synthesizers were they weren't new, but by the time Devo came around, no one was really doing super interesting stuff with it apart from a couple of different performance artists. And uh, Devo created that sound. And even at the age of 12, which by that time, th- that song was old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, it was still like on heavy repeat, which back in those days meant that you would rewind a cassette tape push play oh no i'm not i'm not far enough back you'd stop hit rewind a little bit more push play again until you got to the right spot yeah uh, i mean even in the video with, with devo it's really intriguing when he comes out with the whip right the focus is on the guy with the whip right yeah and uh, and those weird hats the red stacked hats that yeah. look like cake tins i think it, yeah. looks, it looked like um to me plant pots like oh yes 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 yeah. yes all right, my friend, we've arrived at our destination, Jonathan. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to go pretty quickly here. Jonathan, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Oh, yes, yes. I've, I, have, uh, I have mentored a few podcasters, both here at How Stuff Works and outside. And uh, I, I, I welcome people who want to learn. Hmm. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Uh, no. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, that's got to be more than eight. Mm. Jonathan, after having a thousand and one conversations in three months, I came up with a workbook and it's called yours. It stands for your own unique real self. And as you journey into the book, the idea is to define your own unique real statement. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, your mission, Jonathan, what would you say that is? Bring joy to the world because it always could use a little more of it. Hmm, love it. Jonathan Strickland, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, the only thing I want to share, I could say come listen to my show, but really what I want to say to everyone out there is if there is something that really makes you happy and makes other people happy, then certainly take your time to pursue it as best you can, because it really does have a value greater than anything else I can think of. I've done lots of jobs in my life, but the stuff that I do that makes me happy and other people happy, that is worth way more than anything else. And and I can tell you that from personal experience, uh, it is the most rewarding thing. Mm. I love it. Jonathan Strickland, hey, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.